Dr. Max Sinatter is my guest. He's an expert in brain plasticity, neurodegeneration, brain aging, head trauma events, and other brain-related issues. The good news is we can change and reshape our brains on any given day. But can you reshape a brain that has been concussed? Well, uh, you know, we're having uh, a tremendous increase in awareness of the risks of getting your head bashed. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think we... You know, I heard a talk where the punchline was, or one of the questions at the end of the talk, it was from uh, Dr. Anne McGee, who's at Boston University, and she's a world leader in this area. Uh, she's been studying all these football players. So somebody asked her, so if you've been an NFL lineman for 10 years, what are the odds that you have some sort of brain damage? She said, 85%. 85%. So in spite of the helmets, in spite of the, the protection. Helmets, it's, well, it's the, it's the hits. It's one hit uh, after another. Um, there's, well, you know, the brain, it's, it's consistency. If you actually go, I've, I've touched it. I, I have to say that. It's like sort of jello. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like jello. And it's wrapped up in this fluid, and it's got several layers of membranes with fluid you know, uh, between them, which are really to buffer and protect it. But you bash it, you know, you get hit in sure. the head like kapow, like this, mm -hmm. or like this, or you get hit, you know, by some 300 pound guard. Right. Uh, you know, it's going to, it's going to shake, it's going to ring, ding, ding, you know, it's like, you know, you get hit here, it's going to go bashing against this side, and it's going to bash back. Moving around yeah, in the skull. Inside. Moving around in the skull. It's not made to take that kind of collision. So, in fact, you, you know, you've heard about when you get hit uh, and you fall back on your head and then you see stars. Mm -hmm. That's because you literally are bashing your visual cortex, which is here. And you're mechanically stimulating those brain cells as they die. <laughs> uh, and then, so that's what happens. And then, you know, the brain cells... Uh, get hurt, the blood vessels tear, uh, the wires, the axons that connect brain cells to each other can tear and torque, and it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Um, there's evidence, so what happens if you have a concussion? It basically, it's a polite word for a mild brain injury. Let's mm. not kid ourselves. It is a brain injury. So after that, the brain's likely to be swollen, blood vessels are injured, axons are injured. What's the treatment? We don't really have a treatment right now. It's rest, mental rest and physical rest. What we do know is after the injury, the brain is in like a state where it's, it's not normal. And it can be not normal, depends on how severe the injury. It can be not normal for a few minutes, it can be not normal for a few hours or even weeks. And if you have another concussion at the time that it's already halfway on the road to disaster mm. while it's still trying to recover from the first one, it pushes things over the edge and it could be much worse. We think that's probably what happened to Sidney Crosby. He didn't just have one big hit in hockey. He had two hits about five days apart. So more hits, worse than one big hit, obviously. Exactly. More hits and you don't give the brain time to recover. So that's what that's what happened. Then you wind up with cells dying, and once the cells are dead, you know they're dead. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, grow. Well, you can grow new ones, but it's a lot harder than trying to, you know, deal with the ones you've already got. Now, the other thing that happens is that the brain is actually not that good at repairing damage. It's, um, you know, what happens is the cells die, axons are torn. You engage the plasticity process that we talked about. Mm -hmm. You try to rewire things. You grow connections to places that uh, you didn't have before. You do your best, um, and things get better. But in addition, you will often have a smoldering inflammation inside the brain. And one of the things that has been found in the brains of these NFL linemen and, the, and it turns out the hockey, not, guys, the hockey and guys and people coming back from Iraq who've had, you know, head injuries. Mm -hmm. and, and you might see this. So a typical story of the NFL guy is, okay, he has a successful NFL career. You know, he does very well. He uh, retires. He opens up a chain of laundromats. He's got a wife and two kids and everything's fine. Six, eight, ten years later, 
you start to see characteristic problems. Uh, his attention goes, his memory goes, he starts to have emotional problems. The short fuse syndrome is the term that they mm -hmm. use. Pretty soon he can't manage the chain of laundromats, his wife has left him, he's depressed, he's upset, and then he commits suicide. And because that has, okay, then you, then you get the brain at the end of it. And what you see inside the brain is, and we've now looked at a lot of these uh, football players, so there have been studies of different ones. What you see is brain damage that looks like a kind of dementia, like a kind of Alzheimer's. It's a, something where you get accumulations of this protein called tau, which is also in the brains of people with Alzheimer's. You get another protein called TDP, which is in the brains of people with ALS. These things are now forming clumps in the area of damage. And what's worse, they spread over time. So they so grow. They grow. The damage may have happened when you're 25, but the clumps are, when you look at 35-year-old athletes, who, who died because we, mm -hmm. you know, we have to look inside their brains now to see them, although there are new imaging techniques that are going to change all that that are coming. But you see, okay, they're here. Then you look at 45-year-olds, there's more. You look at 60-year-olds, there's more. So what we think is happening is that the process of concussion, the process of brain damage is seeding something else, which then 10, 20, mm -hmm. 30 years later you wind up with this mess of aggregated, clumped together proteins mm. inside your head, and that prevents you from functioning properly, causes emotional problems. Depends what part of the brain is involved. If the emotional parts of the brain are full of this uh, stuff, they're not going to work too good. So the tragic death of the NFL lineman who shot himself in the heart, in the, in the middle of the body, so that science could have his brain. Brain, exactly. To try and figure out what was wrong with him. And it was actually his brain. It was one of the sample that was used. And there's a whole uh, set of brains that are uh, in several neuropathology banks. So there's a big one in Boston. There's another one in California. We don't have one in our center. Uh, but we are, for instance, our, uh, in our center, we have a team uh, that is following uh, the UBC Thunderbirds, the men's hockey team and the mm -hmm. women's hockey team. They're following them this season. They've got a doctor along with uh, the team. And the shocking thing is something like 15 to 20 percent of these young athletes are going to have a concussion during the course of the season. The doctor immediately uh, looks at them. Uh, if he thinks they've had a concussion, they go right to, it, to the scanner. They've, they're all mm -hmm. scanned at the beginning okay. of the season. So we have baseline. We're doing very fancy brain imaging. We're taking blood from them because we think we might be able to develop a blood test that can tell you when you're ready to go back to play. Right. Or when Unlike in the olden days when the coach put you back out on the field no matter what was wrong with you, well, you're, uh, they might say, look in his eyes and see if his yeah. pupils are, <laughs> yeah, are look, dilated. Yeah, you know, so we, we have much more sophisticated. The, you know, the problem with brain injuries, uh, concussions, is that everybody lies. You know, if a football player gets mm -hmm. injured, he wants to get back in the game. He's highly mm -hmm. motivated. I'm fine, coach, no problem. If a roofer gets the same brain injury, he says, oh, I'm sick, and he's going to stay off work <laughs> right. for a year. As he should. <laughs> As he should. Mm -hmm. So knowing what you know about this, and if you had uh, 10 more children, would you let them play rugby football today? I, would you let them play contact sport? I, would you stay as far away no, from man. it? I don't mean shut down you the know, NFL or yeah, the CFL. You know, but. that is a very hard question. You know, um, so I happen to have three girls. Mm. And I remember... Well, girls play rugby. I know they do. But I remember, you know, thinking, well, I'll, you know, they'll get into tennis and the soccer and rugby and things like this. And I asked my five-year-old, what would you like for your fifth birthday? And she said, high-heeled shoes. And I realized <laughs> that was not going to happen. So I'd be very careful. I'd be very careful. Mm. I'd really focus on helmets. Uh, I try to steer them toward non-contact sports. I would be so. I am so happy. I don't have boys playing football or rugby. I would be. I would be really scared. Now the good news is that it's on everybody, everybody's radar screen. People are developing better and better helmets. They're going to be more protective. They're also developing a new generation of helmets, which I think we're going to see soon with accelerometers mm -hmm. in them. So we're going to be able to say. We won't be able to say whether you had a concussion. We're going to be able to say, how hard were you hit? Okay. And if you were hit hard, 
Well, you better come off and get checked. And more damage to a younger brain than an older brain, uh, depending? Yeah, because among other things, the neck's not as strong, <laughs> so you mm -hmm. can't resist it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the young brain can recover from damage better. That's the good news than the old brain. When right. you get to be our age, Fanny, you're lucky, okay. to, you're lucky to be doing anything. Mm. But So if you're going to have an injury, it's a good idea to have it early, but it's, the best idea is to not have an injury. Exactly, but you get in a car accident, you fly out of the car, you hit your head. It happens. You've got one. Yeah, you've got one. And there's a, not a way really to reverse it, you're saying, and it can grow. That's the it can grow. scary part. Now, having said that, what's the answer? The answer mm -hmm. is enhancing brain plasticity. So we are working in our center. We've got people with strokes. We've got people with neurotrauma. We can now interrogate the brain. We can say, okay, in this person who's had a stroke or who's had a neurotrauma, okay, these are where the wires are supposed to be. This is how strong they're supposed to be. And in this person, the wires over here are, they're a mess. So what do we do? Well, maybe we can try to strengthen them, or maybe we can sure. have a workaround. And we're working hard to try to okay, do that. Okay, and are you studying brain tumors, brain surgery, post-op, all of that, what happens in the brain when somebody's been in your brain? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, taking something out that should be out, like a yeah. tumor? Well, I mean, you know, just a tumor, it causes, it's a big mass inside your head. It mm -hmm. causes, everything else has to squeeze over, everything things can get squashed, literally squashed as the tumor grows. And that's part of the problem. You tend to get seizures uh, because a squashed part of the brain isn't functioning normally and one of the things that happens, that's often how you find out that somebody's had a brain tumor is the first thing you see is that they have seizures. And are you still amazed as a scientist at the resilience of the human brain? I am. You know, I have been doing brain research, uh, Fanny, I hate to tell you how long. I'm going to say five years, okay. but it's a little longer than that. After all that bridge. After all that. and. Mm -hmm. It is so exciting. There is so much going on in the field. It just amazes me that we're at this point in the game. Well, you see, when you were so hooked on bridge, you just yes. transferred that because you really had to wean yourself. I bet you have to wean yourself off computer games. Yeah, You're a I'm game a, guy, aren't I'm you? A, I tend to get passionate about things. I think I'm really <laughs> lucky that way. Well, we're lucky to have you. Well, I thank you. Thank you, Fanny. It's nice to see you again. Pleasure, pleasure to be here uh, again. Dr. Max Sinatter, uh, Director of the Brain Research Center at the University of British Columbia. And remember, you can catch our conversations on YouTube or follow me on Twitter at Fanny Keeper. There will be many more smart, savvy, and insightful guests to come. Thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today.